Frozen 2, the sequel. Yeah, I actually had never had a voiceover audition before. I never done voiceover. Um, my manager's assistant happened to get on the phone with Jamie Roberts, the casting director, mm -hmm. and uh, who you never get on the phone. So it was a very special moment. So she's like, okay, well, what else are you working on? What are you casting? And she said, we're working on Frozen 2 do you have a honey marin for me? And she kind of listed a couple characteristics and thankfully she thought of me and one other person from our, our management and uh, sent my stuff over and Jamie said yes. Thank you, Jamie. And uh, I got an audition a week later wow. and I was just so thrilled. I'm a huge fan of the first one, like a diehard fangirl. So this was like a massive deal for me. And I had to do a David Mamet monologue, and I sang a Wicked Game, Game by, by Chris Isaac. Yes, yes. thank you. Mm -hmm. You were prepared. Yeah. I love you. <laughs> um, and Jamie told me in the room that I'd be coming back for the director-producer session. So that in itself was just like, oh my gosh, what's happening? Is this real life? And about two months later, I came back and got to meet Chris and Peter and on all the creatives and... It was a dream come true, and I left feeling so lucky just to have like been in their presence and, and to work with them, uh, never, ever, ever expecting I'd be here right now, so. You're here. I'm here, <laughs> and I keep having to, I'm like, okay, this is real, it's happening, I'm here. Jason, how did you, I mean, tell me. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was a similar experience in that, you know, for me it was a first of sorts, too. I, I have done some voiceover stuff yeah. before, but I'd never uh, done a musical. Um, I love singing. I love musicals. I am a very private singer. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, I have over the course of time gotten a handful of uh, compliments on various karaoke performances that I've uh, given. But I've always been too scared to, like, fully sort of dive into it and be like, as a job, I'm going to yeah. <laughs> do this. And so I was. it was really um, scary to me. But my desire to be in a Disney musical and Frozen two in particular um, made me kind of get over those fears and go to that first audition and then go to a vocal co coach in between that one and the second audition and really try to like work on my confidence and work on my voice and and similarly after the second one it, it almost felt like if that's it then I it was like a little personal victory yeah. for me I keep you know I keep on trying to like push myself and grow in different ways and I was like well I I was so scared and then I I went Did through it. that yeah. Yeah. yeah and um and then yeah and then so to hear that I got it and um was very exciting and then to hear that I couldn't tell anybody was very <laughs> scary and then I was like yeah what? I, but I'm so excited uh, who do I <laughs> what do I do with this information <laughs> yeah. so Rachel honey Marin. yes um free spirit bold brave she's gonna go and do, you know, do yeah. the thing. What characteristics do you share with her? I'd like to think all of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I think, you know, growing up, I, I have three younger siblings, mm -hmm. but I have a brother who's 18 months younger than me and we're pretty much inseparable. Mm -hmm. um, and so I kind of love that there was already that dynamic between the two of them. But growing up, I was someone that I always wanted to be on sports teams that were with all boys and whatever my mom bought my brother, she had to buy me and it was just like constant, like there was such a supportive family around me that was just like, yes, whatever you want to do. And I just felt like I could, I could be who I wanted to be and no one was saying no to that. And I feel like Honey Marin has that innate quality as well that she's just like, this is who I am. And I, she's very fearless about it. Um, and also just growing up, I was constantly outside. Like I wanted to be Jeff Corwin. I only watched Discovery Channel. Channel. My brother and I were just like climbing in trees or catching spiders and like loving nature. And I love that that is a massive quality with within the dynamic between Honey Marin Ryder and her, and her people. Like it's just like such a reverence towards nature. Right. You play brother and sister. You play Ryder. Mm -hmm. You're sort you befriend Kristoff and mm -hmm. you guys hit it off your love of reindeer yeah the whole shebang <laughs> um how did you envision his character and how did you bring it to life um I mean it was it was really uh I I kind of leaned on Chris and Jen to mm -hmm. to find out what direction they they wanted and um they wanted a a sort of I, one of the things they told me afterwards that they had responded to in my monologue was this sort of a uh, sense of humor and kind of lightness that mm -hmm. I uh, apparently brought to it, and um, so they were like, you know, let's let's play around. Mm -hmm. And he's 
he's engaging and he you know he wants to be friends with people he's um, but he's also more comfortable <laughs> around animals than humans, which is a quality that I, Do I also share. Yeah, especially <laughs> not, and I don't get to be around as many reindeer as I would like to, but right. uh, but dogs especially, right. yeah, um, yeah. Um, so it'll uh, Frozen Two will be going to digital and Blu-ray yes. on next month. What do you want people that haven't seen it, the very few people who haven't seen it, <laughs> right, to get from the new characters? Um, the vibe and the energy that you all are bringing and basically yeah. the overall message of the film. What do you want them to take away? I think one of the things that I w want them to take away is that, you know, when 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 uh, Elsa and Anna and, and Kristoff and when they, when we all meet each other, mm -hmm. there's there's sort of an unknowing, uh, unknowable kind of energy of like, mm -hmm. are these our enemies? Are these our friends? And, yeah. And um, and I think one of the things that I love about the film is is a uh, I, I think I'd love I'd love people to take away that sometimes there is a um, we can put our differences aside to to uh, right a greater wrong you know this is something that's sort of affecting everybody in mm -hmm. different ways and I think also acknowledging um, mistakes of the past uh, you know and and and. Uh, it's it's sort of shocking for some of the characters to find out what their ancestors did and and to not shy away from that or double down on it, but to yeah. to feel the pain of that and to move forward mm -hmm. in a healing way. I think is is um, important and beautiful. You said that beautifully. That's like exactly what I would hope, word for word, as well as just. Um, I think coming from, I'm very lucky I come from such a loving, supportive family, and so seeing that family dynamic between the two sisters within the film, mm -hmm. regardless of the pain and the suffering they've both had to endure, and the challenges that they're up against, they're constantly choosing one another, and I think it's always important to think about that, especially with family, and that's a choice that we have. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So Thank much. you so much. It. Thank you. Where's the buzz? Oh, yeah. Where is the buzz? You said we used to be a singer. Oh, where is the buzz? <laughs>